What's going on guys? Cam here from Edmonds Woodshop. In this video, we're gonna go over the brand new Ohmtech Polar. Now this is a 50 watt desktop laser. So if you've been in the market for a CO2 laser, but were just kind of afraid of how big it was, or maybe unsure of the upgrades that you need, this might be the perfect solution. So let's unbox it and show you what's inside. Right here, I'm just going to give you the measurements of the crate. So going starting with the length, it's going to be 45 and a half inches. The width, about 27 and a half inches. And the height, about 14 and a quarter inches. So the crate itself has these silver tabs going around the perimeter of the top. I went ahead and already loosened those up so we can get a quick glimpse inside as we open it. So removing the top, you see the honeycomb bed. It's got the Ohmtech logo on there. I'm going to pull this foam away and show you guys the actual Ohmtech Polar. So there you have it. You got a couple orange straps and this thing is pretty heavy. I would definitely recommend two people to help you out. So my wife's busy with the baby, um, so I'm going to attempt to do this by myself. That wasn't so bad. So just to show you the contents on the inside after the laser has been pulled out, looks like you have a package of material here. All right, so it looks like a good chunk of different sort of material. So acrylic cardboard and probably uh, Baltic birch. So that's cool. They give you free material. Um, here, there it is. So you got your rotary. And then we'll unbox that here in a little bit. Let's just sort of do a walk around to see what's going on with the outside of the laser. And then here you have the front and top of the polar. I did try to remove the front of the tray, but there's contents inside um, that are limiting me from actually being able to do that. So more to come with that in a second. Um, you got the key control similar to the cabinet grade CO2 lasers. They just, it's an additional safety measure that um, allows you to protect it from turning on. Um, you got the start button here, just a simple push of the button. And then this top is, is glass. So um, you got that. And then one thing too I wanna point out is that you actually have elevated feet, right? So um, you got roughly about three quarters of an inch right here with the feet. And that's important because there is a cutout in the middle of the laser on the bottom for the rotary. So it gives you that additional height. And then we'll walk around to the back. All right, and then right off the bat, you see the ventilation port. And then it does have a built-in fan right there. Um, I did measure it. It's about four inches, four and five eighths. So that means the hose diameter, or the duct diameter, needs to be around five inches, okay? And they do supply that. It's on the inside right here. I'll show you here in a sec. You got additional power buttons um, the, for the power cord, the switch. And then you got USB uh, cable, camera cable, ethernet cable. And then right here, is for what some of you were asking in the Facebook group already. It is a pass-through. Okay, and that doesn't look too thick. Um, about a quarter of an inch. Okay, so you're not going to be able to fit anything thicker through there. All right, so let's open up the front and check out the inside. All right, before I open up the inside, let's take some actual measurements of the laser itself. So the length we're looking at about 38 and a quarter inches. The width we're looking at about 22 and a quarter inches. And then the height, 
including the legs or the feet, about nine and a half inches. So immediately opening the lid, I feel some resistance as I lift it up. As you'll notice, there's no actuators like you see on the, on the cabinet size CO2 lasers. That's because they're using some friction hinges here made out of nylon. So all this means is that it's providing resistant pressure to hold the door open. But just something to be mindful of, this is made out of glass. So as you get to about this point, it wants to start to fall on its own. They do add a foam strip right here to add additional protection as you set it down, but just something to consider. So as we take this off, you'll notice that they package additional accessories on the inside. So one of the biggest things that we have, biggest issues that we have with the, the cabinet size CO2 lasers is that they need additional accessories. One of them being the inline fan. They provide an inline fan for you. Okay, so this fan, I looked it up, it's rated for 280 to 350 CFM. So that should be more than sufficient for this size laser. So let's pull all this out and start looking at the inside. Before we actually get into the inside of the laser, I wanted to pull out the accessories so you can see them easier and so I can put hands on and, and show you. So starting from left to right, we have the inline fan, again rated for 280 to 350 CFM. The diameter is six inches on both sides. As I pulled it out, there was this white box and inside this box, you have a wireless control. So you have the capability to slow and increase the speed and then you got timing and then you got the power and then it's just battery operated with two AAA batteries. Then right here you have your accessory kit. Okay, so you got, you got a USB. I'm not really sure what's on here just yet. I'm not sure light burn you have to pay for, so I'm not sure what is included on there. You got a whiteboard marker, you got an additional lens, you got some light targets, I assume for aligning, um, cleaning swabs, keys. What's cool here is you got an emergency stop switch, and then I'm, I'm thinking this is probably if you want to replace your key switch, because uh, I don't see any other location to put it at unless you make yourself one. So not 100% sure, but we'll look into it as we start digging into it. Right here, you have an adapter. So this is six inches in diameter, and this is the five inch in diameter. So remember what I was saying is that the port, the ventilation port on the laser is five inches. Um, so you need this five inch duct. And then in order to get this to fit on the fan, you need the adapter. And then this one right here is your six inch and goes on the opposite end of your fan and to wherever your uh, exit is for your ventilation. And then you just have all the cords, okay? So there you have it. Let's, uh, now let's get into the inside of the laser. Lifting the lid and opening up to the inside, you see I have all the accessories pulled out. First thing you might notice is the Ohm Tech laser assembly right here, laser head assembly. It's got a piece of Velcro that's probably just holding it for transportation, so I'm gonna remove that. But this is actually magnetic cover, right? And then zooming in, you can see it's got a couple self-locating pins that helps keep it aligned. You have your mirror, you have your lens, you have your laser nozzle and air assist line right here, and then a motor assembly, okay? So the importance of these actual magnetic um, pins is that when you go to put it on and it self-aligns, you'll notice that you have this hole on the side. This is where your laser beam will travel. It'll hit the mirror, go down the lens, and down the actual laser nozzle. So it needs to make sure that it's right there. Over here on the opposite end, you've got another lens that you'll have to maintain and clean. And then right here, you'll notice that that's the end of your tube. So the tube actually travels with the gantry and you have this shield, you can take it off, um, but it'll help 
alleviate some of the, the maintenance that you have to do wiping this down every so often. We're gonna go ahead and pull this forward a little bit more and you'll notice your fan. I'm wondering if I want to remove that just because on our cabinet size CO2 lasers, removing the stock fan also helps improve airflow. Um, since we do have an inline fan with that maxes out around 350 CFM, if this is not producing the same amount of CFM, um, then it's gonna be bottlenecked right here. So we wanna make sure we're creating the most amount of airflow as possible. Next thing I notice, you have the a laser beam or laser power and a screen. And I'm assuming this is probably a milliamp meter, but I have not turned this on yet. So I, I have not verified that, but this will be important because it will tell you how much power you are producing in relation to the power percentage you use in light burn. And if you don't know what I mean, I have a power line test uh, video on my channel that you can look at later. Over here, you have some switches. And zooming in, you'll notice that it says rotary and plate. So plate is pretty much for our flat engravings and rotary is for when you decide to use the rotary. So the way it works is basically, once you get the rotary in place, you wanna flip this switch and this switch coincides with the other switch. So they both have to be up or they both have to be down for it to work, all right? And then this is where your rotary is gonna actually go. All right, and then let's move this back up and view the inside over here. So you have a reservoir tank and this is for your coolant. So this will help cool your tube. Now it has blue coolant already in there. Not quite sure what they're using. I know on our chillers for the cabinet side CO2 lasers, we use distilled water. Or if you're in an area where it's gonna freeze, you can use uh, propylene glycol. So maybe that's what that is, but unknown at this time. Then you have your air assist. Now the air assist is rated to produce around 18 CFM. Is that strong enough for a nice clean cut? More to see once we get this laser up and running. Um, and then you got your linear guide rails, um, all greased up on the X axis and the Y axis. On this side, you got, looks like a radiator setup. So you do have built-in cooling and built-in air assist. And you do also have the um, ventilation. So is it ready to go? Sounds like it. Now, moving out to the outside, I'm just gonna pull this tray out so you guys can see. I'm gonna put this tray off to the side. And then we're gonna view right down the side. Now, this laser does come with a honeycomb bed. So if you look at these channels, this channel is where the honeycomb bed slides in and then the tray actually slides in the bottom. So let's grab the honeycomb bed right here and slide this in. So I'm gonna do this one-handed. Getting it right into those channels, okay? And there you go. So once you get the tray, the tray actually slides in. So as you're cutting your pieces and everything starts falling through the honeycomb, then you can actually pull out the tray and then just dump it all into the trash. So pulling out the honeycomb bed, we could talk about the rotary a little bit. So back inside, you'll notice that they already have a pre-cut hole. So this measures about 13 and three quarters. And then this is about an eight and a quarter. So the way this works, you get two rotaries with your polar. You have rotary one, labeled rotary one, and then you have rotary two. 
And the only difference, so if you notice how wide apart these are by the motor, and then how narrow that one is right there, these aren't adjustable on the motor side. Um, so they give you two rotaries. But just looking at it, I'm gonna place this in here because this is where it goes. This end has to be down at this end in this corner. This is your rotary line. And like I said before, it gets connected to this port right here. And then both these switches have to be up, okay? Another thing is that you have these arrows on top of your gantry, all right? So if you're using rotary one, you have to align your arrows right there. They make it pretty simple. But as far as your adjustability and your height, you might have to make, make yourself some sort of platform, adjustable platform, or raise your laser somehow if you have um, an object that needs, that needs to be taller. So this would need to be uh, deeper. Um, hopefully that makes sense. But basically you have to raise or lower the rotary or the laser to make it work. If you're using rotary two, then you have to line up rotary two. Remember what I was saying with the widths being slightly off, one is more narrow and one is wider. So laser two will line up with this arrow where you notice it doesn't line up with this side. So you just gotta be cognizant which rotary you're using. We can pull this out. We can take the tray, reinsert it, grab the front cover here, slide this in. And then last thing too, I forgot to mention, is that you have some LED strips on the left and on the right side. So I do want to address some questions that might be asked. Uh, one of them being, well, why does this look like a laser that's already out there that's already made you know the one that's kind of already popular starts with a G and an F well you got to consider the constraints that that brand applies to their customers right they're only allowed to work if they have internet they have proprietary software proprietary parts um, and that's that's fine if it works for them but you, this model you can use whatever parts you want you can use whatever software you want you don't need internet if you don't want it um, but it, it's similar in fashion, but it has a little bit more versatility without the constraints applied to it, right? Uh, secondly, I want to address another question that I've already started getting is why does this look like a GWIC cloud? Well, that's because the manufacturer for the GWIC is working in collaboration with OMTEC to create the Polo. So some of the parts that you see, they're the same. Um, but the quality that OMTEC applies is going to be applied to this machine. So there you have it. It's the unboxing of the all new OMTEC Polar. So if you guys enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe and be on the lookout for future videos because I will be doing some testing and then I will show you guys what it looks like. But until then, thanks for watching.